to. I know it. Good morning. When we would talk to our um, our chamber of commerce, our businesses, you know, they would say the same things. Like, you know, we don't need you to teach them how to do the job. We need you to teach them come and work and do the job, right? You know, and be there. And so like really just making sure that we um, get our students to understand and respect that time and have respect for themselves. And so really kind of working on those kind of issues. Um, I went ahead and put the PSEL uh, standards in here. That's also on your, uh, the grid, I think. In chat, if you could, just really, you don't have to list all of them because I'm, I'm, I'm sure that many of you have many, many things that you're doing. But if you could just list like one or two things that you're doing to engage either your families or your community partners. Um, if you could put that in chat or like I said, if you can put that in, uh, if you want to unmute, I'd love to hear you. Um, so thinking about what you are, uh, what are you doing um, to engage your family and your communities? Some of you might be doing some family nights. Some of you might be doing, um, yeah. Oh, I love that you're doing on fa monthly. That's fantastic. Um, all right. So. All right. So uh, I love that some of you all are doing these things monthly. I love that. I think that when you can do them more frequently, that really helps, um, you know, and we're going to talk about some of those activities that we can actually be doing. Um, I'm not going to show this video. It's only about an, uh, a minute, almost at an hour. It's not an hour. It's only about a minute or so. Um, but I just wanted you to have that. You know, you do have access to it. Um, having opening houses in the fall and the spring. I think it's good to have them multiple times throughout the year. Um, just to think, you know, even if you can't do monthly, um, but, you know, thinking about doing them, you know, like you said, in the fall and the spring, that gives some opportunities because sometimes in the fall, um, you know, that's early. They're, they're, you know, like, especially if this, if the family's new to the community or the new to the school, they don't really understand what's going on, but, you know, you do it in the spring. And so they, they might have a few more questions. And so I think being able to do that, you know, really kind of opens that up. Um, here's just a quote uh, from Dr. Karen Mapp about, you know, family engagement, you know, just really making sure that we include. And then it should be uh, a lot of times I see in elementaries that they do such a fantastic job of doing some family engagement activities. Um, middle school and, and high school, it gets a little bit harder because then you have all the sports, you have all the activities, right? And so it gets a little bit more difficult to actually do these things because it's harder for them to, for you to even kind of figure out, like when you're looking at the calendar, when is a good time to do some of these activities? Um, so, you know, being able to come up with multiple options, and we're going to talk about that. Like, don't think about just having one. Think about, you know, if you're doing something, recording it, posting it on your, you know, uh, social media, on your websites, you know, thinking about different ways that we can still connect even for those parents who um, maybe work uh, at night or maybe um, who have children who are in various activities. So think about different ways that we can connect with them. Um, again, this is just this. I loved this uh, image of talking about ineffective and effective uh, family and school uh, partnerships, you know, and what does that really look like? And really making sure that, you know, families have a say, families have, you know, some some communication about what's going on and 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 how to improve. Um, I think that is so important. And so we're going to go into a little bit more detail. But again, in chat, if you could, if you'll just tell me, um, what are some things that are really your biggest obstacles when you're trying to work with your family in your community? Um, I'm looking back at some responses from the others. Um, I love the call homes. Um, because I think, you know, we, we try to do that and we try to do, uh, call homes. We try to do, uh, some types of communication with, whether it was mail or something, because sometimes some of our students, the only call that they get from school, right. 
Yeah. Isn't are those discipline issues? Would you like to share? Oh, okay. You came off mute and I was getting all excited. <laughs> so I think sometimes that, um, you know, thinking about, you know, how to how to communicate some of those positive things, because every student there is a positive, right? We can think even that that biggest knucklehead that we have at our school, we can think of one positive with that with that student. And so having the, that communication, I think, is so important. So I'm now looking at, you know, our biggest op schools. Um, yeah, getting them to physically come. And a lot of times I think that is, it's a combination sometimes is, is if they had issues when they were in school, they struggle to come back into the, to the school, right? And it doesn't even matter if it's the same school, but they have a little bit of a PTSD of like, of that intimidation like if they were you know that that troubled kid they struggle coming back in and and you know and having those meetings um you know and coming into for open houses you know our big thing was you know we try to feed them you know every single time our friskies that was that was one of their things is you know trying to come up with something that they could you know feed them with um yeah coming up with times that they can actually come right if you have single parents and then you have um you know a parent with multiple Multiple kids, you know, sometimes they don't want to try to bring, you know, all of their kids. So uh, one of the schools that I work with, one of the things that they started doing, it was a uh, elementary and middle school. They would have their high school um, FCS uh, school uh, classrooms come and do um, kind of like a daycare so that the the parents could bring the kids. They had, you know, students who were working with the student, you know, like working and learning about uh, child development. And they were working with those kids while the parents could actually go and listen to the teachers talk and the administrators talk without having to worry about what their kids were doing. So that's just kind of a suggestion, you know, maybe kind of work with your uh, FCS teachers, your FC, uh, FCCLA. Maybe they can, you know, help you out with that kind of thing. Thing. Transportation is also an issue, um, you know, and think about, uh, you know, language barriers sometimes is an issue, right? Thinking about how are we going to communicate uh, with our with our parents who maybe um, speak a different language um, or at least um, struggle with speaking English fluently. And so thinking about some different ways that we can do that, um, you know, we have the the. Um, some different ways that we can really kind of communicate and really kind of pull all of that together. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. And you all talked about some of these barriers, right? Busy schedule. Everybody is busy, you know, thinking about, you know, all the different things that we're doing. Um, child care needs, you know, we talked about that and, you know, maybe a couple of ways of, of uh, us getting around that a little bit and our school staff, right? Sometimes we feel like, it's hard for us to ask our school staff to do it. Um, I remember being at, um, you know, our middle school and high school, and we would talk about doing some different things. And I would hear, well, I don't want to ask the the faculty to do one more thing. I don't want to ask them to come in and, you know, work because, you know, that, that's not part of, of their of their job. But it really kind of is right. You know, talking about, you know, what Jimmy was talking about was like, if, if we have great leadership and we have great, uh, um, communication and we have great relationships and culture that everybody wants to go above and beyond right and so like really kind of figuring out ways that we can do that and figuring out ways that you know like when we have our faculty coming in and if they need child care like how can we help them with with what they're doing also um but there are a couple other things and you all mentioned a lot of these right um, there's a couple of other little quotes there from Secretary uh, Carbana, uh, you know, really thinking about our, our parents are really our first, our, our first teachers for our students, right? They are, they are really leading that. They're with them, you know, for years before they come into our, our schools. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're making those connections with our parents, so uh, really getting into the heart of it is, you know, our impact with our families. If we do that, look at the benefits, 
We're going to have better attendance and better behavior because our kids aren't going to want to have that, that phone call. Because sometimes when we make that phone call, if we don't have that connection with the family and the family already has a negative you know, perception of education, then it's going to be really, really hard for them to to take it seriously when we have some kind of issue, right? When we call our, our parents and we say, you know, this incident happened, you know, it could be when the kid comes home, the, the parents are just like, eh, whatever, you know, it, it's okay. But we want them to be engaged. We want them to know the value of what we're doing in our schools. Uh, we want our students to to make better grades and not for us. We want it to, want them to do it for them. Um, we want them to be able to have better social skills. You know, again, that is for, uh, you know, especially when they go beyond right into the community, um, because, you know, when you when you see students out, you want to be able to say that's my student, you know, and be very proud of them. Um, and then just be able to have a better school, better culture into it. Um, and so here's an example. Um, I think this is from Florida, but this is just an example. If you don't have in your policies a family engagement um, policy, here's an example of one. And here's a link to the full. Um, but just, you know, making sure that you have something in there that kind of stresses the importance and why it's important to your school, uh, I think is great. All right. This is what you really want, right? The strategies. So thinking about, you know, where do we start? A needs assessment. Figure out what your parents need. You know, do they need, um, you know, I know for me when I was at the high school, you know, we had some uh, parents who they had never done dual credit. They had never done FAFSA. They had never, you know, had that opportunity when they were in school. So thinking about, you know, our students, they just didn't have a clue. And so really kind of making sure that we we got that information out. And even like I would, I would talk to parents and I would talk to students because we would have students going over to the ATC and they would get their certification. And then I would try to get them to go and get their um you know, maybe there's their certifications at one of the tech schools. And I would explain to them that they could get a work ready scholarship so it wouldn't cost them anything. And they were just like, no, we can't afford college, but it's not going to cost you anything. And now I would try to talk to the parents and it was the same thing. But it was that mindset that when they were in school, they weren't able to afford it. So really just trying to make sure that we communicate with them a little bit and, and figure out like what it is that they're actually needing. Maybe it's that, you know, um, you know, I hear, I see on uh, social media, you know, helping with homework, you know, parents are struggling with helping with helping their students with homework, um, especially math, because, you know, they're like, it's not done the same way. And if I teach them the way I was taught, they get it wrong. And so like really kind of, you know, doing some workshops for the parents, you know, um, and you can do those together, parents and students, you know, like doing some of those workshops and then figuring out who in your school can really contribute and help with this, right? Your librarians are huge helps. Your tech support is going to be a huge. And of course, I can't ever talk enough about Friskies. Um, I adore them. I think that they can, they know so much. They know so much about your kids from when they were in elementary school all the way up to the high school, even if they weren't at the elementary with them, because they have so much communication, you know, from the youth service center to the, to the uh, family resource. There's so much collaboration in your uh, district that they know so much about your students and their families. And so they can tell you all of that. They can tell you the students who, um, um, you know, maybe aren't living with your with their parents, they're living with their grandparents or their aunts, and they can tell you all of that back history. Um, but they have all of that information, right? And think about, you know, some of those community partners that you can use, the Boys and Girls Club, your extension office, you know, we used our extension office for a lot of different things. So thinking about how we can do that, and we're going to really think about some high impact family engagement, okay? So again, when we're thinking about like some lower kind of things that we can do versus some higher impact things that we can do, some home visits. Um, one of our districts 
every year before school starts, they post three days that they will be going out and doing home visits. And that's when Friskies, um, I don't know, like for us in my hometown, we have a big family, we have a big back to school night, you know, at our local uh, park. And so that's when families can go. But again, if there's a transportation issue or a timing issue, like, you know, our students don't get that. Whereas in this district, um, the students are listed teachers and uh, it's everybody, everybody in the district, uh, no matter if you're a cafeteria worker, bus driver, whoever you might be, you're teamed up with uh, two people and you go and you deliver all of the school supplies and the first day uh, t-shirt that they want all their students to wear. And so they go and they introduce themselves and they welcome, you know, to the school district. And so that is just huge. And they talk about how when they post that, like the parents and the grandparents are calling and they're saying, hey, um, my kid has a dentist appointment at this time. Please don't come and see us during this time or this time. We'll be here at the, you know, we'll be back at this time. So they, I mean, you know, and they, because they're like, the kids want to see their teachers. They want to see people from their school district. And so really kind of thinking about how you can do those kind of things. Um, so from the first day of school, right, we can focus on the classroom, we can focus on the school, make it all look pretty and everything, but we need to make those summer contacts, even if it's an, an, a letter or an email or a, a postcard, making some kind of contact, you know, if you can't go, you know, do home visits, think about ways that we can do individual, you know, uh, and yeah, it costs postage, but think about ways that we can contact them. Uh, even if it's a phone call, that doesn't cost anything, right? Um, you know, and leaving some messages and, and saying how excited you are to have their, their child in your school, a uh, huge benefit to start the year off, right? Um, back to school nights. Some of you all, you know, kind of talked about those kind of open house nights. We can do a couple of ways to communicate. We can communicate through websites, newsletters, you know, all of those kind of ways. But we can also, again, make sure that we are communicating in their language. So if you have multiple languages, make sure that you're sending that out in multiple ways. All right. Make sure that your school counselors are including that into everything. Make sure that your teachers, if they have a um, a, a blog or if they have a newsletter, you know, that they're communicating that. Make sure that, you know, that we're, we're posting it everywhere for our parents to know that it's happening. Um, again, types of communication, there's some low impact and there's some high impact. Um, we can talk about home visits again, but, you know, there's some other things that you can do. Interactive homework, you know, maybe if, you know, you've got some, uh, um, students who are really struggling and parents are asking, you know, how, to, how can we, you know, improve? Because I even had that at the high school, you know, in the counseling office, I would have parents call and say, I don't know what to do. And we would start having homework nights, you know, and we would have uh, uh, where students could stay after if they wanted to. But we also, you know, think about um, for those students who maybe can't stay after, but have access to uh, Zoom or Google Meet, and that, that way the parents can be right there also, you know, so think about some ways that you can do those kind of things, some tutoring nights, some academic nights. I know some districts that have reading nights or math nights, you know, they, they focus on a particular content and then they highlight what they've been doing and the student gets to kind of tell their parents all the things that they've been doing. Um, so it really kind of brings in the parents uh, and what they're doing. Uh, parent teacher conferences. Let the students lead those, right? Um, you know, I know it's a lot of work, but again, let the students tell the parents what all that they're learning and all of the things that they're doing. Um, again, you know, even for those students who um, are, are, you know, a little bit of a behavior issue, that's their time to shine, to let them kind of, you know, show a little bit of what they're doing. Even if uh, their, their scores might not be great, they've done something that's fantastic, right? We can get them to, you know, if we if we work with them, they can get at least one product that they are really, really proud of that they can show their parents. Um, just, you know, think about some strategies here of, of, of letting them go back and redo um, and improve what they're doing, right? 
Um, again, here's some ideas for some family engagement, family nights, wellness nights. I know some people are doing like uh, the mental health nights, or I've got one district who does uh, growth mindset nights. Um, so, you know, thinking about, you know, just different ways that you can do those kind of things. You can even do some educational. Um, we have a lot of schools who are, are, are really getting powerful into STEM. Um, or STEAM, if you're including the A. So think about some ways that you can really kind of um, make that powerful. We did a lot of nights with uh, colleges and dual credit at the high school. Um, and think about some, you know, like our local uh, Chamber of Commerce does a monthly like breakfast or a, a coffee thing. Well, think about ways that you can, you know, bring them in, you know, to the school and, and let them know what you're doing, even if it's just a quick little one pager of all the things that you're going to be doing. And then on the back, all the things that are coming up before the next one so that they're aware of what's happening. Um, and then offer that, you know, at various times so that, you know, they can come either early in the morning they, before they drop their kids off, you know, or you can do it in the afternoon as a pick me up, you know, whatever they might need. Think about some food and community drives that you can do. We did a food drive once when I was at the middle school. And really, it was so funny because the class who had brought in the most was going to get, I think it was like a pizza party or something. And one of our local pizza um, restaurants uh, gave us pizza for $5. And so we, we did this. And it was insane. The parents got into it. Everybody was, you know, bringing all this food. My classroom, I was a teacher at the time. My classroom was just packed full. And so then um, on the final day, we took it all down to the gym and it covered the whole basketball court. That's how much food we had uh, to bring to our local uh, mission. So just thinking about different ways that you can give back to the community um, really kind of helps that, you know, that uh, that culture in your school, right? Um, some other things that you can do, you know, don't only think about doing everything in, in person because that, yeah, that's not that's We only got a couple of minutes left. This is a wonderful session and we had technical difficulties getting everybody in the meeting room, but I just want our speaker, our wonderful speaker, uh, we can show our appreciation in the chat um, to please, um, you know, just spend about three or four minutes wrapping up mm -hmm. so that we'll yes ma'am thank you yes all right so a couple of other ways that you can do it is some drive-through events i've heard a couple of districts you know doing some of these of course we did these in uh during the COVID time right but sometimes you know even just doing some of those i think is huge um, and then here are just a couple of, you know, some pictures that you can do. Again, these are some things that you can do for um, your your parents, but also you can bring in some uh, some community involvement. OK, some different activities. I will say for these father, daughter and these mother, daughter, uh, son dances don't and they've changed the names to these because not every student has a father not every student has a mother so think of different ways to be inclusive for all of those um, we've even had um, uh, older brothers take their uh, sisters to the dances so think of ways that you can be inclusive in all of these um, again some ways to communicate doing some relationship mapping and I'm so going really, really fast through all of this, but you have all of this and here, this is what I wanted to get to. Here's my contact information. If you have questions uh, about some things that I didn't get to or I went really, really fast on, please uh, feel free to email me or call me um, or text me. There's my phone number. Um, I would love to help because I, I do that a lot with great districts. Um, they'll call or they'll email me to, you know, to come and help or to help set up or whatever. And sometimes we can do those kind of things. And so please feel free to contact me at any time. I appreciate all of you guys. Administrators are a huge support for our uh, schools and you, you know, like Jimmy said, you uh, set that tone for our school districts. So I uh, really, really appreciate that. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was really quick. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Very, very good session. Thank you so much. Let's give her a hand.
Um, and thank you. So many great ideas because we know that family and community engagement is the key. I see one of my um, friends from United We Learn and our um, committee is building a bold new future with communities. So this presentation was just so informative and I will follow up with you because our next meeting will be in Bowling Green. So that if anyone- Oh, fantastic. Here, feel free to join us. It'll be in April. So thank you. Okay. Again. Thank you. If anyone else wants to unmute to give a shout out to our wonderful speaker, now is the time to do so. All right. Well, the next session starts in about seven minutes. So you have a chance to, um, if you have a question right now, uh, this would be a good time to ask a question or put it in the chat so that we can uh, make sure it gets answered. Otherwise, um, you find the next great session to attend. And thank you so much for joining this session. And it's been wonderful. Thank you. Now, did you put your handout? Um, is your handout available to the participants? Yeah, so, okay. yeah, so when you go to the grid, uh, it's the slides are all there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I uploaded those last night. Hi, okay, I do have a question. Um, you talked a little bit about the mental health and growth mindset nights, mm -hmm. um, and I really like that idea. Um, what are some things that you've seen be really successful? um with those just some examples okay so, so um the mental health nights i really love the ones that i think the ones that um bring in the community so we have a couple of districts that have um a lot of community support so like community uh life skills you know some different um mental health agencies and so they will set up booths and a lot of times they'll give fidgets or, you know, they'll make comment. Like one time I had um, an ice spy jar uh, table. And so, my, you know, as the students were going through, they got to create their ice spy jar. Um, so, you know, just having some different things. Then they had a room where they did some um, different activities, some, um, you know, some physical activities um, to really kind of, because that's part of mental, right, is is really kind of getting your physical uh, aggression out a little bit. And so they did that. Um, and then the parents, um, while the students were in there, the parents actually got to go and find out like some of the different uh, things that they were doing. So at this particular school that I'm talking about, they did uh, mindful Mondays, and so every Monday they would the school counselor would lead the school into like a deep breathing activity or a yoga activity, um, and so the whole school would participate. And so she kind of just showed the the parents some of the different activities that they would do. For the growth mindset school that I work with, um, it is fantastic. So uh, the last couple of years. Uh, they just have they have five rooms and so the the students and their parents just rotate and we have uh, five different activities that they work on and to improve their mindset growth mindset and so uh, it's an elementary and so uh, one of the activities is uh, we were actually going to do it tomorrow night I don't know with the snow supposed to come back in I, I haven't heard if we're still doing it tomorrow night or not but one of the activities is, you know, moving um, pom poms with pencils from one bow to the other, you know, doing some little things like that. And, and our parents will do that. We will be making some calming bottles. Uh, we try to combine growth mindset and mental health, uh, you know, doing some different activities, but we always do multiple, uh, multiple things. And so in both of those schools, um, you know, like I said, there's five different activities for them to do. Um, and so it's really kind of fun because the the teachers lead it and then the, the parents are also there to, to help them. But definitely email me and I can give you some more information and speci more specifics of, of some things that they've done. All right. Well, that's uh, that that's wonderful additional information. All right. And please email our speaker. And again, this session is being recorded. And we will, I hope you will join us for the next session here in room two. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thanks.
The next session in this room will begin in three minutes. <laughs>